So, that is the line width of the resonator. So, there are optical cavities galore, you have two mirror cavities, the so called confocal geometry, you can have micro lasers, you can have vertical cavity uh, surface emitting lasers or vexels, they have this geometry for a cavity. You can have a three mirror cavity as well, right, you can have, you, can, you, want, you want to focus the beam somewhere inside for some application, you can have four mirror cavities which have a bow tie geometry, okay. You can do that like for example, in uh, uh, in some contexts, you can even do spec spectroscopy inside the laser where you can imagine that one of these pieces is the gain medium and the other a test sample, spectroscopic sample that is placed inside the resonator or for that matter Z shaped cavities as is popular in the case of titanium sapphire and femtosecond uh, lasers. So, these are all optical cavity realizations, good for that. Now, the point that I made earlier about cavity stability, I am formalizing this a bit. Um, this may be at the edge of the scope of what we want to discuss in this. Um, in this course, um, this plot on the on the right is called the stability diagram. A good course on lasers available online. There are several on NPTEL. Um, you, we can look that up. We'll also post links to these courses in our. Uh, course notes, right. So, our friends here can take note of that. Uh, but there are also books by, such as Laser Electronics by Verdian, the sort of uh, magnum opus lasers by A. E. Sigmund, Anthony Sigmund, which is quite the Bible or uh, books like Optical Electronics by uh, Ghatak and Tyagarajan or I think also optical electronics by uh, A. Yarev. These are all excellent sources uh, of primary information where, where you can find a lot more details about how to treat resonators. And from the perspective of what I have called ray confinement here, although we have been speaking about waves, you can think of the ray as the k vector of the um, wave that is propagating. It is an approximate definition of the of the ray of ray optics. We have not spoken about ray optics at all so far in this course, but it is a useful guide. So, from the perspective of confining rays and there, thereby achieving stability of the wave that is inside the resonator making uh, several round trips, uh, every resonator geometry, look to the left please on this view graph, every resonator geometry. Um, can be placed on the stability diagram and we consider all the way cavities made of two plane mirrors to made cavities made with spherical mirrors where you have a concentric geometry or what we call a confocal geometry. The concentric geometry is one where the focus of either of these identical mirrors of these two mirrors meet in the middle of the cavity. Uh, this is symmetric spherical cavity, one can also imagine an, a non-symmetric uh, geometry. Whereas here we have a confocal geometry where the focus of each of these mirrors lies on the surface of the other. You have a hemispherical cavity with one planar mirror and the other being a curved mirror. So, this could in some sense be um, equated to the concentric uh, cavity. You could also have a concave convex combination forming a cavity and so on based on the on one's need and application. But whatever cavity we make, okay, we can based on its geometry place it on, place it at a point on this stability diagram which we are, which we showcase, showcase here. You could place a plane parallel cavity here. You a confocal cavity is right at the 0, 0 point, the origin hemispherical, concentric and 
so on. So, this is plotted on a scale of 2 g's that is g 1 is on the horizontal axis, g 2 on the vertical axis of this plot where there is a blue shaded region. Okay. So, the blue shaded region is essentially the region of region of stability. Okay. But I am still I have still not revealed what G's are. These G's G1 or G2 identically are nothing but a geometric quantity it is 1 minus if the length of the cavity okay, is the cavity is has a length L between the two mirrors then G is just 1 minus L divided by either R1 or R2 okay, and there are no scales on this um, okay, we have not marked the scale so well. So, this is a plus 1, this is a plus 1, this is a minus 1 on the scale and this is where the minus 1 of this scale is. So, this evidently tells you that the blue shaded region which is a representation of, of a certain condition essentially turns out to be a representation of the fact that the blue shaded region on this plot is essentially the region where the product g 1 times g 2 is essentially between 0 and 1. So, this is the stability criterion. So, this is what I was motivating as something you will learn more formally in a course on lasers. But the reason I brought this up is after having explored the Fabry Perot interferometer so much, we should also have an insight into how to build or realize this in a laboratory both for the purposes of building a Fabry Perot interferometer on and building a realizing a laser, right. So, that is the whole point ok. So, now given the geometry we can figure out where uh, a laser lies. So, if I consider this concave convex cavity it lies very well within somewhere within the well inside the stability region. So, if the cavity geometry or anything is perturbed then we can imagine that this red dot essentially moves around in the cavity becoming something of a bigger blob. Okay. So, this is the effect of perturbation on this mirror. In, real, in the real world all mirrors are subject to vibrations some kind of mechanical disturbances or thermal disturbances right. Temperatures in a laser or a cavity can also um, you know vary with time there could be thermal effects on the mirror because a, a fairly strong electromagnetic wave is inside the cavity and there could be some lensing effects and all kinds of things. All that simply means that the the effectively the uh, resonator occupies a certain volume in this space g 1 g 2 space which is for a physicist or an engineer sort of phase space. Now, considering all that uh, a laser or an optical resonator designed with such geometry that it is well within the region of stability has a much better chance of or rather is much more stable to perturbations than some nice looking geometries such as the confocal which are right at the edge 
or falling off the cliff of this stability diagram or for that matter you see intuitively we we had a feeling that the plane mirror would very likely be a, you know just that just that stable if i disturb this a bit till the mirror a bit one of the mirrors a bit it will go out of stability this was almost the sort of feeling right in terms of visual or imaginative uh, discussion which we had uh, we agreed upon something like that right so that is essentially rep well captured by our intuition if you wish is uh, well justified by uh, or on by a more firm uh, putting this entire concept on firm mathematical foot footing uh, a hemispherical mirror too is at the edge uh, concentric cavities as well so, uh, this gives us an idea of how to practically realize cavities and keep them stable. Okay, so, that is a good uh, point for us to bring our discussion today to a close. So, we learnt about, again went into the details of fabric pair of cavities, we learnt about them. We essentially also um, learnt about calculating the line width of the fabric pair of then we dwelt a bit upon the finesse and finally close today's session with learning about the uh, getting an intuitive feel for stability of optical resonators ok. So, certainly in the next class we will break into the world of optical pulses. See you there unless there are any questions uh, at the moment I know I have taken quite a bit of time. Any questions from online audience if there are any? Okay.